Did you know that even with modern medicine and surgical procedures, 100% of cases of cranial bisection result in death? Now, in case you weren't aware, cranial bisection literally means having your head cut in half. So if modern medicine can't stop cranial bisection from killing you, what hope would a medieval soldier have? Like most medical issues, prevention was preferable to treatment. And what better way of stopping your head being halved than wearing a helmet? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Norman nasal helmet. And the flat-topped Crusader helmet. And the Sugarloaf helmet. So, let's get on with it. Before we get started, I should point out that medieval helmets weren't worn against the bare skin. Like modern motorcycle and cycling helmets, there was a layer of padding worn between the helmet and the head. So I'm going to swap out this fabric cap for a padded arming cap. I feel much safer already. The reason why this helmet is called the nasal helmet is because of its characteristic nasal guard, which protects the nose. These helmets are also known as conical helms because of the cone-shaped top designed to encourage blows to glance away from the wearer's head. I'll be the first to admit that this does look ridiculous, but it's one of the rare cases where the phrase I wouldn't be seen dead in that is actually a positive. And for you fashion conscious fighters out there, there's one thing that's often overlooked when considering this helmet. It was often worn with a male coif, underneath the helmet, but over the padding, like this. Voila, or as the Normans would say, voila. As you can see, the coif protects the side of my head, my neck, and my shoulders. And for when you're heading into the thick of battle, you can fold up this ventail, for more complete protection. The nasal helmet was incredibly protective, especially when worn with a male coif. However, as long bodkin arrows began to be developed, designed to slip between the links in the mail, something more solid to protect the face was needed. And so the flat-topped Crusader helmet was invented. Unlike the nasal helmet, the Crusader helmet had a flat top, which meant that blows wouldn't glance off but impact directly onto the top of the head. It's not quite clear why this choice was made. It may have something to do with the construction of the helmet being quicker and cheaper to make, to meet demands of the thousands of Christians going on crusade. You may also have noticed the holes in the face of the helmet. These are called breaths or ocules. Breaths because it helped the wearer breathe while wearing the helmet, and ocules because it helped to provide visibility below the eye line. Even though the Crusader helmet provided more protection than the nasal helmet, it was far from perfect. So, the Sugarloaf helmet was invented. Throughout the 14th century, Sugarloaf helmets like this were being used. Vastly superior to the flawed design of the Crusader helmet, the Sugarloaf helmet reintroduced the cone-shaped top and introduced the liftable visor so that the wearer could get extra visibility and stop for a drink without having to remove the helmet completely. Instead of wearing a full male coif under the helmet, an Avon tail could be connected from the base of the helmet to protect the wearer's neck and shoulders while reducing the weight of the armour overall. Though these changes may seem simple or obvious now, this evolution came as a direct result of the challenges and demands of the time. Almost 300 years of time. There are of course countless styles and unique variations of helmets that we would love to look at. But sadly that's all we have time for for this video. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments section below. Until next time, take care.